Lagi na ako nanosit. Ropina wala na seat. Ropina wala na seat. If they ever claw leg of the gate, I say. If they ever leg of the gate, yeah. If they ever free we up, you know. Why you think them lock you out and not try to worry out? Them know, say, if them let we in, you know. Yeah man, some argument when they try to hold on some artists when they try to get ratings over other artists if they take fence and hide, you know. I let them know all the twin in here, think a bad win a bad. Yeah man, we bad, 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 see how yeah man. I hold them hold on the gate because they know say, Yo, if they hold the gate and I let with you. Zane? Yeah, but we have to find another way, we have to go, we have to go under the gate. Mm hmm, under the gate we have to go, you know, because they think say, you know, what they do. You know? I got last favor. Yeah, man. Let me let you them while I let you get. Gatekeeper them. You understand me? I say, Cause bad song I make. Bad song I make. Bad song with full of energy and, and a man who knows to perform the song them. And here we go on now. Them fool. Them not realize that when them let you the hit makers them, it draw the, the new artist them too. When them let you the hit makers them, pan a juggling. It draw the new artist them, you know. Yeah. Because the, 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 the artists them were already established. Them have a fan base. You know, due to the songs them where them have a crossover already. Like, you know, when, when Sean Paul crossover upon a rhythm, him draw the rhythm with him. You understand? So more, more songs get to play upon the international market. So when all the selectors say Sean Paul Panda read him and don't play the Sean Paul, you don't have no sense to music, you are dunce to music. Sean Paul the Panda read him, you know? You never hear him sing it? You see me, I say, conscience the Panda read him, yeah. But the Mongola, you see, they think stay away, you know, where I the, the people in my ball say juggling for me, but I went juggling come back now. You see? You look at selector them, just play two little songs or one little song. Yes, I said, two little TikTok song. If it's a, if a song that go viral on TikTok, you don't hear it. So somebody have to go create a, a dance routine feat and go so. And go so. Yes, I said, if, if a man no create one of that, I go so. And, yes, I said, and you have make the routine, you have to make the routine similar to the, the last routine. And the next routine look like the next routine. And you just add on the routine and everybody does a go so. And if you not go so in the blood, clean dance with them. You see me, I say? Yeah, man. You're dead in I show. Dead, dead, dead in I show. You see me, I say? Mm hmm. So, what's it go still? We think, think of it's time. Now, dance our lecture. Who ready for it? We drink on a coffee, we drink on a tea, we have on a seat. You see? Dance our lecture. It's a. One good lecture we are going to give forward, you know. Zane? So the dance hall lecture. So that is Zodiac Wine. The song is Zodiac Wine. The video is coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to release the video. You see? So look out for the video. Check out the Mr. Vegas TV. And boom, boom, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. So let's talk. Let's talk about dance hall. And today's topic we are talking about. Maledan. Zane? Based on an article, Maledan and his producer, you know, based on an article that is out there. You see? So, in one article, Maledan said he could have gotten signed by a major record label, but the producer, but he did not own the, um, he does not own the master for the song, a song called V6. You see? So, Maledan is saying, because I'm not own the master, um, he couldn't get signed. Zin? So the producer for the track, um, according to this article, you know, did an interview. Zin? 
So I can read a little piece of the, the article. Zin? So V6 producer David Ireland says major labels don't know what to do with dancehall music. Ireland, um, the producer behind Maledans, hit V6, has confidently stated that his choice not to sell the song to a major label was a wise one, and he foresees a future where the artist will be grateful for that decision. Maledan previously disclosed in an, in, in an interview with the Perspectives podcast that Ireland's decision may have hindered a deal with a major label. However, the producer has stood firm on his decision, arguing that the track is thriving independently and questioning the added value a major label could bring to a dancehall music. To dance, to dancehall music. It was a good decision, not signing it over to the labels. We got a bigger deal to even do a remix with Steph Landon, and that was turned down by the artist. Turned down by the artist. The song has been doing well on its own. So we didn't need a record label, Ireland told the Observer. He cited Byron Messiah's Taliban's and TJ's Drift as examples of dancehall tracks that gain popularity without major label input. Major labels don't know what to do with dancehall music. Look at Taliban's and Drift. Those were big songs before major labels got involved. We don't need the major labels. What can they do that they haven't done? There were so many offers that we got. All the labels across the world reached out, uh, maybe six to seven. And even their sub-labels. Every single day for like two months. You don't get paid for your work. You get paid for your value. The producer revealed. Ireland, who also produced Lali's Tipping Night, Spice's Bedrock, Bedrock and Jacure's Oja, was adamant that keeping the V6 Masters would prove to be the right choice for the long-term success of the track and the artist. I am not going to sign to no label to tell me what to do. Ireland Records has been doing well um, out there in the world. I believe that the artist will, think, will thank me later, he said. On the flip side, Maledan has opted to focus on the horizon, channeling his energy into producing more music rather than lingering on, V6, on the V6 situation. I not try to stress the situation. It's a situation when we don't make up my mind. Um, say already, I'm going to find another bigger song than this. He told Perspectives. So that is basically from the producer and uh, Validan, Maledan. See? No. The producer for the track is making a whole lot of sense. You see what I say? His point is, is um, cogent. Yeah? His points are cogent. What I say when I say majors don't know what to do with dancehall artists? Right? In this case, trap artists. Because again, this is not dancehall. You understand what I say? Oftentimes you see they put out article that major labels are not interested in dancehall. No, major labels are not interested in the new music that is coming out of Jamaica and it is not dancehall. You see? We have some dancehall influence tracks coming out like this one away, the man them have mad out and everything that have dancehall elements this is more like a dancehall track or like skeng put out a tune named Lick Miss you can't hear the dancehall flavor night you see but majority of the songs that are coming out these days are not dancehall so it's not a dancehall era anymore it's just like when we had dancehall a man used to do one and two little hip hop tracks like flex and them tune there you see but majority of the music that's coming out of Jamaica is not dancehall so just get that clear. It's more hip hop influenced. You see? Or drill music or trap music or whatever they call it. You see? It's not dancehall. You understand what I say? No. What the producer say about the music where I come from the, the space, the local music and the record labels. It is true. When the artist get a song 
And the song start buzz in you know, the base market and them run go sign a major label deal straight to a major. 90, 95% of the time it fails. You see? It failed. Failed. Excuse me. 95% of the time they fail. Why? As the producer say, they don't know what to do. They cannot hear it. If it become a big hit, them can take it and take it to the next level. But you have to have a manager. You have to have a manager or you have to have like a subsidiary when you know about the music. Somebody to walk in the project. Somebody to monitor the project. Somebody to have the, the, um, the, the directors them and the programmers them and everybody on point. Or else you will go over to a major and you get shelved. They will, you have a song and it's doing, look, it's look, it looks like a possibility. It looks like it can be a big hit. So they want to grab it early. Because they don't want it to turn out to be a monster. A big, big hit. And they have to go pay a whole heap of money for it. To sign it. To license it. So if they grab it from a possibility, they pay a little or nothing. And if the artist, if the song doesn't do well, them just shelf the artist because you sign a four album or five album deal and you get shelved and you cannot record for anybody because every time you record a song, they tell you to pull it down or they tell the person or the producers to take the song down. They send you a warning. So when you run to sign to a major, you have to be very careful because now you are not free. So we as dancehall artists, as we as artists with the music in the local space, we like to go on a lot of different beats. So when we hear a, ba a bad rhythm, you know, you're ready to voice. You want voice from the rhythm because you know, say this, this may be an opportunity for you to have another hit song. You're not recording, you can't find a hit. If you're not recording, you cannot find a hit tune. And you don't know where the hit ever come from. So you may make five juggling pass you or five bad reading pass you when you could have find a hit. But because you cannot record freely, if you record something and it sounds good, you have to send it to the label and the label will clear it. Or if you put it out and it start doing numbers, the record label will say them own it. Because they signed you. So what the producer is saying is making a lot of sense. And I've been saying this for a very long time. Remember I talk about Shensia? Remember I talk about J the Kingdom the other day? Remember I talk about Samantha J? You see what I say? Remember I talk about all these artists that got signed to Major and they did not have. That's why I told you the importance of VP records. You know, I get backlash for that, you know. But I showed you the importance of VP record in context. Why a label like a VP record was important in the space because they stood behind Sean Paul's project. You see? So Sean Paul signed to a label where understand or had people in their departments in, 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 in different areas that understood what to do. So they basically took the money from Atlantic and market. You see? They don't allow Atlantic to hire their own staff. Maybe when they hire somebody, because what is this guy name with the responsible for the Shampoo project? A little brother went over VP. You remember my name? Zin? He was the one who was behind Shampoo's project. And he worked for VP. So you have to have somebody on the phone with them. You have to have somebody to get them to do this, get them to do that. Or else they will take you and just put you on a world tour like what they're doing to Massacre. Put you on a world tour with an Afro artist outside of his fan base. So when they look and they see Massacre not getting any forward on the shows them and Massacre not doing anything on the shows them, them lose interest. When Massacre decides him to sign now, so he's going to be exclusive now, and he's not going to do this, and he's not going to run from a clash, and he's not going to take on a clash because he's saying, No, you lose bread, you lose money. The money there, you can't get it back. Because today you may run the place, you know, but tomorrow you're not, you're not run the place again, your money drop down. Next year, your money gone down. Two years' time, another artist around the place, three, four more artists around the place. Nobody's not really interested in you again. So the money there, you can't get back the money there. And at the end of the day, 
If you sell five bag juice and you make five dollar, and you sell five records and make five dollar is five dollar. Because in thirty years, nobody in the business if you used to run the place, they might go say, where you get out of it? Show me where you make out of it. Is I gonna just walk around like one little one-time artist with nothing to show? You see? So when artists like Mali don't know he's saying that he could have get signed. No, the producer. Is right what he's saying about artists signing to majors. Them don't know what to do with them. Jovi Rockwell got the biggest record deal. Based on my understanding. When I recorded, you're gonna need me, they signed her. Everybody lined up to sign Jovi Rockwell. The person who was behind her project, they, I heard that they dropped him off when the deal was going through. And he stood back, or he stepped aside, and somebody took over Jovi Rockwell's project. And the person that took over the project did not know what to do. Took her to record to, for Neo, them to write song for her, I heard. For, um, she did song with Flo Rider and did song with Lick Wayne. The fucking Lick Wayne and Flo Rider group gonna help you. How are they gonna help you? When a record label listen to, um, a record label listen to this, right? And signed you. This is what the record label heard when they signed you. See? A record label hear you with this sound and decide that, okay, I like what I heard. Right? Let us sign her and people, people trying to sign you. Why this Mr. Vegas alongside Joby Rockwell? Yeah. Yeah, so me and my next girl, so she not doing too well. Hey. white people dancing is that she gets signed for and I take her and give her all this money or whatever based on what I heard allegedly and she went to Flo Rida them and Neo them and Little Wayne them to do music they didn't know what to do with her but if they had given me a, 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 a contract are giving me some control over the project. I would have taken her to Jamaica. I would have taken her back to Jamaica and put her on Bobby Digital who mixed the record. And I said, Bobby Digital, give me them sizzler rhythm there. And me just sit down in the studio. I would have find two more old tune, like two more um, um, Alton Ellis and one more, you know, Delroy Wilson. Because I realized her tone. And find two Cynthia Slash. And find a one Marcia Griffiths. And just get... If you do a song with a with a with a I do on ya, a DJ, get her if you do a one song with a conscience a DJ. You understand the message because we have the budget now. Can can walk in. Get her if you do one with Beanie man. You see? Because this is what they heard. This is what them like. So you gonna want things that they want you to go pop. And that is what happened in a lot of instances. You go back to the record label, they try to change your sound. They try to tell you that you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this type of poppy music. And the pop type of music, you need a major budget. Major budget, you know. So when a record label signs you, you think that they can just release the song and it does well? No. When they, when they release in a Beyonce project, they're spending millions. When they release an Ariana project, they're spending millions. They might make sure say it work. You when just go in, them not do that to you. They not and them gonna tell you that you failed, you flop and drop you. And if them not drop you, them hold on to you until hoping that the little money that they spent to sign you and the little money that they spent to do the little marketing on your song that they heard that they liked, them have it on the books. Some of them write it off and let you go. Some of them hold on for you. 
And some of the times them hold on for you too long because you were in the moment you were doing well. And them hold on for you, stop you from recording, you never get back that. You never find back that space there. That space there gone leave you. 99% of the artists or 98% of the artists that got signed flop. You can count them on one hand. So I could go 95%. Flop. Flop. And the one them will work is because they had somebody that understood, like specialist. Spectrum. They knew what they wanted from Shabarangs. And they marketed Shabarang. With some hardcore thing too. Because remember you know. Shabarangs go wrong. Go do song with that Johnny Gill and them something there you know. That never did that go you know. So them have to come back. Ting a ling a ling. School bell a ring. Knife a booyaka booyaka fa. And them song they did that do it for Shabba. Chill alone and them songs eh. So Shabarangs could have still keep the core. And still have keep the bass market. And still have keep the urban market. And still have. You understand me I say. And then him, still, him could have still go. Mr. Loverman Shabba. You see what I say. But they had specialists. Because if they didn't have specialists and the people them that understood the things that they could have just send that out to radio and it worked. Mr. Loverman, shop them up. They don't know what to do. They must have specialists who understood the business. So if you're not up in the meetings, then I remember, you know, I, I did a deal with Delicious Vinyl. When a tune called Pull Up. And when I went over to Interscope because they, they, they did a deal with Interscope. So, Delicious Vinyl was like the sub. And, you know, like the side reel. And they did a deal with, Delicious, with, with Interscope. When I went over to Interscope, they had um, D12, which is 50 Cent's group. They had Mary J. Blige. They had Eminem. And Dr. Dre. And Mr. Vegas, like fifth. You see who they're on the board? Five people where they work. But who ever get the less attention, the least attention? Mr. Vegas. So you think so they're going to drop Dr. Dre's project for, for attention to me? You think they're going to drop Mary J's project to pay attention to me? So when that person that work in the record, right? G-Unit, sorry, sorry brother, G-Unit. D12, who was D12? D12 was on the board too. I think D12 was, what? Was Jada Kistam or somebody? I don't remember who, I think Dre and some other. What D12 be the on the board too? I don't remember who them. Anyway, the point is, right? The point is, they're not going to drop G-Unit to focus on you. Unless you go crazy at radio. Unless you go crazy with numbers. So if you don't have somebody over in at the meeting them, I remember one time we were chasing me and Leslie had chased the radio, the radio guy. See? Chasing the radio guy all over the place. We are hunting down the radio guy just to get him to focus on our project. Until Pitbull took the record and do over the record and then they dropped us like hot Kalaloo. Them just dropped with some blue. Because, no 50 cent. Make it old. When name Pitbull. Pitbull, did I say that's a Pitbull? Yeah. Pitbull took the record, do over the record, call the record Kulo. The record was called Pull Up. He took the record, call the record Kulo. And the rest was history. See? But the point is, if you're not over there, ah, uh, Eminem group, thank your family. See? So if you're not, if you don't have somebody like a VP with, what a man name used to work, Sean Paul's project man? Elias, Murray Elias. See? Yeah, man, my brain, I go, my brain, I get back with it. <laughs> Murray Elias was behind Sean Paul's project. Yeah. You see? Him? So, you had Murray Elias behind Sean Paul's project. I look a white man. Right? I look like a white man, in my view. Right? And then you had specialists behind Shabba Rankin. So, outside of that, who else? Who else dominated the international market? Who else? Some people find some one song. And what happened? That's it. Rihanna from the Caribbean had Jay-Z literally involved. Jay-Z was literally on deck. Yeah. Jay-Z never leave it up just to the major. 
literally on deck. And then keep our Caribbean sound, keep our Caribbean sound until them take time, transition her, transition her, transition her, transition her, until she get to the point where she at now. But they had her at one point singing over, no, 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 and them sang there. Remember that? So a lot of these artists, they want to run to major label and think so it's, a, it's the end of your career if you don't get signed. It's rubbish. It's nonsense. You see? Right now I have a record deal with a French label and I'm watching them keenly, you know, I'm giving them 24 hours, you know. Yeah. But I just do it because what I have to lose, basically. As a whole man now, I, I find one song it good for my catalog. I find one song it good, I don't sing one bag of song already. I don't worry myself. You see? Yeah. But you as a little new youth, ready to go sign with your life? My youth man focus on recording a bag of song. You see, Malinan? Go and record a bag of tune. No make no juggling miss you. No make no bad reading miss you. Just a record tune. You see? And when you're getting signed to a major, make sure you have somebody in your corner who can go into the label and get things done. Don't just get signed to a label. All of them where you see, protege them sign. Lay like them sign. All of them sign. Taliban, when the Byron Messiah signed, TJ, them said TJ single got signed. What am I going to do? They may try shoot another video. Maybe try get you into the urban market. Try to get you on Hot 97. Try to get you on in Boston. Try to get you in Hartford. You're going to get those if you just link Willie Daniels. Just call Willie Daniels and say, Willie Daniels, I want to work this song at radio. Give him 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 100,000, whatever. Him charge you. You see? Maybe him tell us, say, oh, give me five grand for myself and give me 15 grand for the records. You pay 20 grand. You get that, you're getting more than that for a concert. Go in your one pocket and take out 20 grand and give Willie Daniels and say, Willie, five for you, 15 for the mix show DJ them. Yeah, because we are going to go down there, we are going to buy some oxtail and some rice and peas and we are going to go down there, we are going to play the song and we are going to make them eat oxtail and rice and peas and eat, make them feel the Caribbean vibe when they're playing the music. Just set up some meeting with the PD them, set up some meeting with the directors them, set up some meeting with the big show DJs them. Go in there and do some dub plays for them and some drops for them. Make your manager work. Your manager get 20% of your money, make them work. It's the same thing when you get a hit song and run go through a hip hop artist on your song and your song just flop. Because it takes the focus off you now. The hip hop artist didn't want to do a song with you out the box because you're not nobody. To them. They wait until your song start buzz. Then jump on your song and overshine you upon the song. Outshine you upon the song. Notice. Taliban now says. Baron Messiah is the feature. I dare you not. It's now saying it's Burner Boy song. The producer right. Malidan, I don't know about the master side. I, I would try to educate on the master side. When you go record for somebody, make sure you and them talk so you have a share in the master. Because you're carrying something to the table as well. I remember the copyright law. It states, which is bullshit, say the person that bought the tape and booked the studio the time and all that shit, according to them, is that person who owned the master. It's bullshit. But... You are not buying any tape anymore and you are not buying any studio time. You send me a rhythm, I'm a vice for your rhythm. So, me and you need to talk about the master. Before the song even release. So, we don't have that problem there. Me and you don't have to worry, me and you don't have to quarrel. We work out, you say, okay. You can't give me 50% of the master because you're going to spend the money and all the thing and you're going to shoot the music video and you're going to do the promotion. All right. Me need at least 40% or 30%. If I have to do all of the work, yeah, you're going to spend the money. All right, cool. Me take 40 but I'm not going to argue with you when the song release, but the master. You see, because we learn from them. And we keep educating you. Know? Educating you know, look at DJ, you know, look at artists, you know, you know, listen to what we are educating you. Know? You know, you know, rather go, go listen to fuckery. But when them things happen now, you know, come to the paper tab, but you know, you own master. You know, need to come to class. Because we are doing this free. We could have set up a room and we have to pay away to learn. Because we are teaching up based on the mistakes that we make too. 
And that we are doing, you know, we are educating you know, so you know, make the same mistake too. But instead of that, you know, look for the, 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 the minor things them to pay more attention to. Like, them on the style me. The pussy the style me. So come out of your style me. No, 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 no. Listen to the things that we are saying well, can benefit you. You see what I say? Is you go get a little one hit or a two hit and then five years time nobody no hear about you. Nobody no know you. Nobody no member you. You see what I say? But getting signed to a major is, isn't it a year or a year? This was going to be the biggest clash. Since Mavada and Cartel. This was going to be the biggest clash. Right? We're not even talking about the one who made it involved in it because that's a comedy. You see? That was a comedy show. The clash with TJ and Byron Messiah was going to be the biggest clash since Mavada and Cartel. What happened? Two of them have labeled business to take care of. Notice, Byron Messiah not released no more song. You think any artist won't get right off? You think any artist want dead in a clash? You think any artist no want release bad tune? And write off back a boy because a boy write him, you mad man. But Byron me say, he can't release nothing. Where am I going to release? The record label him a call. I call him manager. I call whosoever behind him. And I say, what are you doing? You're going against what we're getting ready to release. You're going against Taliban. Who you, you're changing the focus. <laughs> So I'm afraid to back off. But guess what? If that clash did it continue, TJ could have get 200,000 a show. Barry Messiah could have get 200,000 a show. And if you get 200,000 half a record sales, and you get 200,000 half a stage show, I still glad 200,000. Nobody cares about how much record you did sell in a 20 years from now. You're pitting them where you go get, and the bag of girl them where you go breed up, and the bag of pitting where you go have. They don't care if you were hot. Them care what you are going to do for them, what you are going to set for them, what you are going to left for them. That's a sound of a thing. So when Major get involved, them shut you down. Them stop you from your true possibilities. So the only way you're supposed to sign to a Major, you're supposed to sign to a Major when you have a proper team and they're going to allow you to do what? To be who you are. Like Sean Paul. Hardcore dancer, right you. Just give me a light and pass a draw if he did not have VP and Murray Elias them. Maybe he would have been over there so Just give me the light and pass the draw. Whoa, whoa. That's not going to work now. Them not put five rapper for a Paul album. And, and they would have spent five million to market and promote a song with a rapper. Sean Paul alone. Just give me the trees and make me blows it now, nah, blows it him alone. They allowed him to be who? Sean Paul. Even Shabba them tried it with him. You know? Because remember them sent for Johnny Gill and come to Jamaica and big long budget, big long one bag of people that drive back a Shabba and Shabba have a limousine them and this and that. Who you think of your feet? Excuse me. Who you think gonna pay for it? Huh? I guarantee you, I can bet money on this. I can bet money on this. The tour that they put Massica on with all the Afro artists, if Massica did organize a tour for himself in the urban market, Massacre would have made more money. Facts.
Kan man passa mig? Ja. Ja, det är mitt allvar. I guarantee you. If Masika had done his own tour, dance all bodies, and went on the road with Dotty, with the bus, and got New York, Connecticut, Miami, DC, Lara Hill. Come on, Jamaica, come come to the big show. Add two people from the show. Like, put a one, such and such, or a one, such and such. Look at Idona. Idona went out there the other day and did a tour. And he had alkaline pants some leg. Me guarantee you, sir, Idona make more money than we must make on the promotional tour. It's promotional tour. Yeah. And I now watch the man money, you know. I just tell you the reality. Have when a record label take you, you don't have a hit record, a pop record. You do not have a pop record. You see? You don't have no record on the billboard. You don't have no record around the place, in the crossover market. You have one song where say, Who a kid dip? Who a kid dip? Who a kid dip? We are mash up the core market. And you're going on tour. In an Afro market. What can sense that make? What? And it's not my business, but it's out there. It's in the media. So it's not my business because of my money. But I'm sure you say. Just in case you want to make the same mistake, you can go ahead. I just say, you need to hear it somewhere. You heard it somewhere. You heard it somewhere. Because you should have go down a bus and go wacky dip in the core audience. Go down a bus, down a wacky dip, wacky dip. Go down a New York, down a Brooklyn, down a Bronx. Down a wacky dip, wacky dip. Go down a Connecticut, go wacky dip, wacky dip. Go down a Fort Lauderdale, go wacky dip, wacky dip. And those promoters, be sure they give you 50, 40,000, 30,000. Go on a Bahamas, go wacky dip. Go on a Barbados, go wacky dip. Go on a Trinidad, go wacky dip, 50,000. Go on a Guyana, go wacky dip. And... Your manager and whosoever them behind you add value to the tour for the Caribbean like them. Come on, man. You know what? Listen to me. So, please, if you don't want to look at help, I am available. But I'm going to charge. If you don't want to look at help, I am available, but I'm going to charge. But you don't feel like I'm the idiot in a dancer. You don't feel like I'm the idiot in a people. So you don't stay there and I make people kid mistake. Because you don't realize say, a dollar is a dollar. The white man, no matter where he get the dollar from, even the negro, where he maybe not like. You never see a black man going to a Benz dealer and you see them escort him out. They say, hello sir, can I help you today? Oh, oh nice shoes. Oh, oh, where did you get that? Oh, I like your chain. Oh, where did you... Yeah, mappy, 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 what you say if you really have money to come by, you know? Yeah! Hello, Mr. Smith, um, what can I get you? Can I get you some water? Would you like some wine? <laughs> you see, I said. So, back to the conversation. Mr. Ma Malidon, don't worry about getting signed to any major label. Go do some damn work. Go record some more songs. And if you have a chemistry with that producer, next time you go in the studio, I'm going to tell you this too. I'm going to give you a little side management thing. You can see me down the road and buy me a liquor. Buy me a liquor down the road. Right? Maybe the producer is not going to like this either. But you and the producer have a chemistry, and chemistry is the greatest thing in a music. So it's the producer that we have a little chemistry with. You see, music chemistry. You and him for always good. But here we go now, you see, next time you go check him, man to man, if my big man is a youth, make him know so you listen to Vegas and say, Yeah, so the fuck the master, you know. I can't have to share the master, you know. Oh, they can't record that thing there. You see what I say? Because good rude boy, they don't understand it, and they don't know them can deal with the people, them. You see what I'm saying? Just, just saying. So, you know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, man, I understand everything we're going to last time. I would never really work out the thing ahead of time, but the time, you know, so I'm going to share, share the master. Yeah. You know, so I don't think he's going to say no, but because he's so like him knowledgeable. He's so like him well understand the business. So if you're a man who taught them where he must understand the business to a point for no, say the artist is entitled to a share of the master. So in the future, when you go record with him, don't stop record for him. Because he and him have what? The chemistry. And him sound like him ready to work with you. So since him knows so much, make him guide you. But put the money or get a lawyer and make them do a little paperwork and thing. Or them, you understand me I say? Make you and him have a business relationship. Likewise, a musical relationship. Don't just leave it up to ear and then down the line you come ball and, and yeah, the producer, oh, I'm never own the master, so I never get signed. And it, it. No, man. But continue to work you with. Nobody not really know you yet. You see? The little girls, the, man, the little youth, them in the base market, them know you, but there's a bigger world out there. And the youth are sound like him. Understand? We are going, but here we are going. You see? Work out the business side of it. So at the end of the day, you see the brother was, we, 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 we started Motown. Barry Garden that started Motown. Right? How do you think he started Motown? They did some songs. And they took it to um, a distributor or a record label. Right? Barry Garden that signed Mot that, that, that formed Motown. Right? And when they went for royalties, him and Smokey Robinson, they went for royalties. You know how much they got? Three dollars something for royalties for four 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 sides because them days that them used to put um a song on one A and a song on B. So they had like four sides and they went to collect royalties and they got three dollars something. Three dollars something. Berry Garden, thank you for the correction, um, Miller. Berry Garden. Zin? So Berry Garden, mm -hmm. all these years I thought it was Barry Garden in us. Berry Garden, thank you, brother. Zin? Somebody said Barry again. Gordy, somebody said Barry Gordy. Who know me at that? The man of farm. Motown, Zin? Thanks, thanks, the man of farm Motown. No, 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 me attack. Let me look it up. Come here, let's say Barry Garden. So now that you're correcting me, let me correct myself. So I'm not making a mistake again. But me always say Barry Garden. A Gordy? Okay. A Barry Gordy. Okay, Barry Gordy. Thanks, thanks family. All this time I say Barry Garden. Barry Gordy. See, thanks for the correction. So Barry Garden started Motown. See him? No. He started up because they go collect royalties and get $3 something. See him? And Smokey Robinson, right? Smokey Robinson and the other guys that went to him, they were like, yo, they thought he was going to get upset. And he said, no, 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 no. See? And he framed it. And to this day, he has the check, they said. Right? He has a check to remind himself why he started Motown. And he started Motown, Motown so um, artists could get proper royalty, proper accounting, fair share. That's why he started Motown. Zin? And to this day, him and Smokey Robinson is still good. Zin? Um, so, what that means? That means that you can always have a good relationship with or most times you can have a good relationship with people in the industry, but you just have to make sure you set, set certain things on the table or at the table before it gets out of hand. You understand? We're not dealing with animals. And if you deal with animal, you're not supposed to have a, 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 a sing or record something for an animal. These are the days when people used to get bad up and you have to come to studio, come come sing. He's a man sent for you. You see? So, start out the business side right first. You see? Or start starting out your business and stop worrying about major labels. Major labels gonna take you and shelf you, in my opinion. Zin, they don't know what to do. I have a label right now that I'm working with, and every time everything I telling them to do, them doing opposite of it, and it's not fucking working. I can tell you that. You know I don't lie. It's fucking working. Because to, to produce a pop record and to promote a pop record is a whole heap of money. And if you're not gonna spend Ten five million dollars on a project, it don't make sense. Especially in this era. It don't make no sense. You know how much money them have to spend behind burn a boy them for them song boss? You think burn a boy them just happens overnight? Burn a boy them have to do a bag of things. You know, just happen overnight. They have to be
plugging them in playlist after playlist after playlist after playlist. And when they get on a major playlist, the song may take off. I know artists where them spend $10 million just for the song to go viral, just for the song to start reacting. So some, sometimes you hear some songs out there and they're doing well, you don't know the amount of money that they put behind it. For it, especially in this digital era where there's so much competition. There's a lot of competition. You come, no, you are competing against Taylor Swift. One time Ghana you know, compete with Taylor Swift, she in a little pop world way, way over so. Now you're competing with Taylor Swift, Beyonce, everybody you're competing with. Because nobody cares about, or people hardly care about if you're number one on the urban stations. They want to look at the Spotify playlist. That is it, you know. They want to look at the Apple Music playlist or the Apple Music charts. And you're competing with the biggest artist on the planet. So why are you going to run to try and compete with these big artists when the, when the record label is not going to spend any money to, for, you, for you to even have a chance? It's like playing NFL football with no helmet. And everybody have an helmet and tackle you. The coach decided that he's not going to put you in any pads or helmet. When we say pads, we mean the shoulder pads and all them things there. You see? It's rubbish. Why? Why am I going to go on a promotional tour at my age? Go out of here. Promotional tour for what? What? Promotional tour to do what? No. When I go on my main tour, I will produce, promote the music that I just released. What am I going to do my promotional tour? I'm going on a major tour. Give me a money. Give me some money. If I put on a Mr. Vegas tour, I'm going to get all the dancers and all the lighting and all the nice things that burn about them. I'm going to show the people and say, yeah, we can do it too. And then I sell and I'm going to promote the album. We are going to take me and put me on a promotional tour with one of Afro artists. So the people of the Afro world not even know one of my songs. Where does that help me? Where does that help me? How is that going to help me? How? Why would I be Byron Messiah and turn down one of the biggest clash with TJ when we know say, this is going to bring money in my pocket. And this is going to make me have more hit songs. TJ's song was about to be a hit song in 24 hours. Turned back like Christian. Because Byron Messiah run gone left the war. So TJ ready for gone left the war. Beanie and Bunty get the most hit songs. Out of a clash. Mavado and Cartel get the most hit songs. All of the songs they want to sing now are clash songs them. They got the most hits out of clashing. Understand that. So you have a one song, Taliban, a much of the place, and you get an opportunity to make a whole catalog for yourself so you can tour for the rest of your life. But me understand, you're signed. You can't do nothing. Your hands tied. Your foot them tied. You have chain around your neck. You see? And they're waiting for the next single. And they're going to tell you, every time you come with one, say, that is not it. Yep. And then you know what happens most of the time? Them send you back to the base market. They say, oh, I think you need to go back to the base market and, and start there. So why them never just leave you at the base market? I don't know what I'm going to tell you. They're going to tell you to go back to the base market. Like I remember when Samantha J was in Jamaica, after they signed her for the tight up skirt, was a sample. A few years later, she, were, she was back in the base market working with Natel them, trying to find a base market hit again. She run the fire food. Same thing with Tammy Chin. Signed. And make you do a song with Michael Bolton. Run left our food. Now she's Amer Jamaica's best mom. The truth. <laughs> no need no defense. <laughs> that, was nice. that was so necessary. Yeah. But it's true. Jamaican best mom. Because when an artist run leave them food, 
I run up the base market, then come right back here, come turn. Jamaican best dad and Jamaica's best mom. Have a good day. Big up with yourself.